what would you consider the worst crime? You may not be able to choose one, which makes sense. This person I'm going to discuss has probably committed each of the ones you named. There is no solid image of this individual, but there are a few profile pictures from the many sites he is on. Here let me show. Oh, never mind. The only profile pictures I can find are gory. One of them is a baby with a glass goat smile. Let's talk about this guy in sections. Section 1, The Introduction. This person goes by multiple names, but I will be using his alias Ripper primarily. Remember my last video? The one about the collective? The collective was the group that made Amber Alert, Suffer Little Children, Scream Bee, and Loveless Savage Mix. Well Amber Alert and Suffer Little Children eventually got covered by Plagued Moth, the most famous gore YouTuber, as of my knowledge. Ripper having began somewhere in the early months of 2022 or the late months 2021 saw the fame brought to the collective, and he wanted fame too. I'm going to guarantee that he wanted to be a villain. He knew that if he wanted to be noticed by Plagued Moth, he'd have to do the same thing as the collective, but worse. Gore mixtapes primarily comprising legal child content were getting dull. Don't get me wrong. They were extremely shocking, but viewers started getting to their senses and stopped talking about them and started silencing people mentioning them in their communities. Ripper had to do something that forced people to talk about him. So Ripper having that in his mind, he knew he had to do something really outlandish and foreign for this community. He started simple with one of his first creations. Section 2, His Legal Creations. Before I even talk about the mixtape, I thought maybe I should discuss the site under the same name. I will refer to the site as one of its other names, being Animals Dark Paradise, to remove the confusion between the mixtape and the site. Animals Dark Paradise was actually a bit more known than I initially thought. Bad House made a video on it, and so did some ordinary gamers in his dark web browsing series. There were more than 10,000 members on the site, which is very worrying. People are asking for help finding videos and sharing some pretty terrible videos or images. People posting crush videos and famous videos like Gushy, Old Number 7, YLYM, and even someone asking for Scream B, which I covered in the last video. There are also gross people on there requesting people to make videos in the style they want or with the animals they want abused. Many more terrible things are also posted. I'm going to assume that many of the clips in Animals Nightmare and taken from Animals Dark Paradise, which is probably why it was named after one of the site's other names. Now we can talk about the mixtape. The length is around 17 minutes in length. I do not know how many clips there are in it though. In the mixtape there are two of the much more famous videos. Those two are YLYM and Old Number 7. I will describe roughly what happens in them. They are both really disturbing. Old number 7 is a multi-part series of videos, having you guessed it, 7 parts. The video starts with a black dog on a camouflaged tarp. The main abuser is wearing full white with a mask on. The person puts a stick into the mouth of the dog, and then duct tapes the mouth shut. Then the dog is tied with a thin rope into a position, where the dog is upside down with its paws tied to the rope. The person spits onto the dog's eyes and cuts open the dog's nose, to put pepper spray inside. The dog then gets sexually abused with progressively larger sex toys and a bat. The dogs are then stabbed with needles and an ice pick. The torture continues until the abuser cuts open and removes all the organs of the dog. If I'm correct, the person in the video was never identified and sadly got away with it all. Now for YL. YM guess what it stands for. You laugh you- The video starts with an image of a black dog in a forest with its mouth also duct taped. A person comes into frame and shows his pliers. The person breaks the dog's fingers and legs, and then he staples the dog's eyes shut. He then puts his fingers into the dog's. Then he does the same with a sex toy and a rod. 
Then he gets a rod with a sharpened end, and puts it into the ground with the sharp side facing upwards. Then he puts the dog on it, and lets gravity impale the dog. The person comes back the next morning and removes the organs of the dog, and urinates on the dog's carcass. Two truly disgusting people, that as of my knowledge, are still out there. And those are only two clips from the entire mixtape, so think about what else is in there. This next one I can't find, simply because I didn't look for it. But it's an example of how weird laws are. I'm only 80% sure this is legal by the way, so don't go looking for it, that's why I didn't. So the only information I have on this is a clip from it, that was posted on Livergore. The Livergore clip's thumbnail is from a case in Russia, where a father did synthetic cannabinoids, also known as spice. He bashed his daughter against walls, and stabbed her with glass. He then ripped out her heart, and ate it raw. All because he thought his 3 month old daughter was possessed by a demon. The clip is that, and one more video is in it as well, but I do not recall, and I won't watch the clip again. This full mixtape has CP audio. According to America's and Canada's laws, it's legal. For Canada, they say any visual representation is illegal. When it comes to audio, only audio that advocates or counsels those acts are illegal, not actual CP audio. Same thing for America. No matter what, if you are actively searching for anything of those sorts, you are disgusting. Also the laws differ between states, provinces, etc. So it is technically barely legal in some places between Canada and America. What I mean by that is it can be legal or illegal depending on where you live in Canada and America. And just like I said last time with the collective, if they have the audio, they definitely have the video. I know basically nothing about this one, other than it has some audio from the dark web album Pseudoscorpion. Pseudoscorpion is an album that samples CP. That's really all I know. I'm pretty sure that this one is legal. Daycare is an app made by Ripper, not a mixtape this time. The first song is titled Destruction Sampling Only Days is Destruction. The second song is called Daughter which samples what Ripper refers to as classic hurtcore videos. The final song is called Desire which samples abuse and some CP. Each song is a techno song. Now we are done with his legal creations. Section 3, his illegal creations. For the sake of my morals, I will not be sharing the name of any of the illegal creations here. This first creation we will call the Quirky Butterfly. If I'm correct, this is the first creation by Ripper that has illegal hurtcore content. Not audio or music sampling it, but actual visual material. It presumably has from start to finish all of Daze's destruction. If you don't know what that is, congratulations. I'm 95% sure it was posted to the Gore database, or GoDB. Because GoDB is on the surface web, it had to shut down, and come back with a warning sign that states they no longer allow child or animal content. This next one I again won't name, and have almost nothing on it. It was posted originally onto the dark web forum Amarizno, which if you translate that to English it means little love. So I can assume the forum is a pedophile forum, and I can assume the mixtape is illegal.
This next one is a exclusive to the dark website Hurt to the Core. Yeah, another Hurt Core site. Originally the site was hosted by Lux, someone that worked with Peter Scully, who is actually on the cover of the mixtape. Hurt to the Core was shut down with the arrest of Peter Scully, but another site popped up with the same name, with the same contents, with the same rules, by different people. Again, I know none of the contents, but it's obviously illegal. Actually let's bring the cover back for a second. If you didn't know, this is Satan. This specific picture is basically in a set. There are a few more pictures that are very very similar. Like these. One of these other pictures were actually used in the cover of Ripper's worst mixtape. I know nothing about this mixtape, but I do know things about this one. I won't talk about it yet though. I will talk about it in the next section. Section 4, Speculation and Investigation. So Ripper originally started on surface web gore sites making gore edits, and posting some fairly known mixtapes like MD Pope. He eventually took it a step further with posting some of his own creations which eventually got him banned, due to them being illegal. He would post child abuse content onto some other surface websites and eventually even posted child necrophilia content, again on the surface web. Ripper's creation animals nightmare and a few others were often sent around discord groups slash servers. Because people sent Animals Nightmare with other extreme mixtapes like Scream B or Amber Alert, people assumed that the collective made it, which isn't true. There really isn't much to his relationship with the surface web that I haven't already touched up on in other chapters. In June of 2022, on the Surface Web Gore site, Gore Reflex, or Thread was made and followed a mini interview. The account attempting to interview Ripper went by RIP Ripper. They were either a group or a person attempting to learn about and take down Ripper. Now, sadly, I myself cannot find this thread, but I can easily recite what I have heard people say RIP Ripper has on Ripper. Presumably, Ripper is Australian male, 16 or 17 years old, 6 foot, and 160 pounds. That's just for physical stuff about him though. He is able to find rare hurt core CP, and says that, if any form of law enforcement get on his trail, he will commit suicide as he doesn't think, or hope he'll live long anyway. He also may have an Instagram account that is still active. Ripper made himself notorious. People being the cringy clout chasers they are, decide they don't care how they get famous. They just want to be known. So they leech onto Ripper with the thought that they will gain infamy as well. Ripper knew that and decided to make one of his mixtapes the most unique he could. This will be the only illegal creation by him that I will be naming. He named the creation Candyland. He named it that for multiple reasons. Candii being one of his aliases, the word candy often being a nickname for CP or child related NSFW slash L content, and that he made another illegal mixtape with a pretty similar name and cover. The reason that this specific creation stands out from his others is because some of the images are original. People may not remember what we say here tonight, but by god, they'll remember what we did. That statement implies some sort of group had a call, meetup, livestream, or some sort of get together publicly on the dark web. That means Ripper's voice, or face or maybe just anything about him could be publicized. Now looking at this other poster, you can see it says cut for Candyland. That's what I mean by some of the images being original. 
Ripper would ask for people, mostly miners to carve some of their skin and or flesh to spell his name, or the title of the mixtape. Those posters were used as payback against Plagued Moth as well. Ripper now having the publicity he so desperately wanted, he also had a reason to hate Plagued Moth. Those images and more were posted to the official Plagued Moth subreddit which got it taken down. The entire subreddit. On the poster it says MLS, which again could possibly lead to some personal information about Ripper. If I cold found the original, not blurred image of this poster, that would be great. This isn't confirmed, but with the amount of picture slash videos of people carving his name into themselves, it's assumed blackmail played a part in getting those pictures and videos. Either that, or some of the picture slash videos were of himself. But back to his cult following, he has these desperate for attention followers that promote some of his creations by posing with a sign that has the mixtape title on it, in hopes of either being noticed by a ripper or even being put in the mixtape. The same people desperate for the attention are usually past acquaintances or have known him before. Candyland is the name of the group that Ripper created, if I haven't already stated that, and this is editor me going back on the video. I found the quote of Ripper asking for original content for his mixtape. It's a bit long, but here it is, word for word. Hi all. If you've been here for some time you might have come across my mix tops, well unless you were late to the party and the link died before you could snatch it. Basically they're just comps of extreme hardcore CP animal abuse child abuse, which I release for free and usually take a lot of time to compile. And for the past weeks I thought of making the best and most extreme mixtape that the world has seen. It will have everything you can imagine, so much hardcore, kiddie torture, screaming and crying kids. It'll definitely be a fun watch but all I need from you all since I'll be releasing it free of charge like always is support for the mixtape. Basically, do anything to show support for Candyland, like, cut yourself for it, hold up a sign with Candyland written on it, abuse your pets or kids while showing that it is for Candyland, make your kids hold up a sign for it, anything. That's what I need to make this mixtape even more legendary. If enough people show love for Candyland we as a community will be a part of the biggest project the hardcore community has seen for a long time, well video wise at least. All photo and video tributes will be put in the mixtape. Let's do this together. Send all the pics or videos to this email. Or post them here in this thread. Thanks. So as you can see he didn't only ask for people to cut themselves. He also asked for original child abuse and animal abuse content. Interesting. Somehow, some way Plagued Moth knows who Ripper is. Let's see. But tying in the evidence of just contrast comparison, meaning their hyperfixations, the kind of content these two individuals talk about and have in-depth knowledge of, meaning illicit content, uh, there's a lot to tie in. But the final piece of evidence that really put all this together is multiple IP pings on Ripper, meaning he wasn't even using a VPN at these points, and another individual that was suspected to be Ripper pinged the same IP. What this means is they literally traced their fucking home address via their internet connection. That's the pretty much the gist of it. Now, IP is not 100% accurate, so to speak, but this person used their school email. So who is Ripper? Well... Here's Ripper. Yes, this is a Photoshop picture to make fun of Ripper. But this is someone on Reddit called Fergie the One and Only. Now, you may be familiar with this person. They are hyper fixated on me and other YouTubers who will not give them clout. And they basically just coast around on Reddit making icebergs and just giving feedback on some really filthy things. That's weird. I remember talking to Fergie before. And Fergie helped give Mondoja some of the films or mixtapes for the Google Drive thing. Let's look at the proof that Plagued Moth has provided to confidently say that Fergie is indeed Ripper. So their ipes match up and they know about the same things at the same time. Seems like a genuinely fair argument. But hear these three words.
Making this video isn't going to necessarily be a 100% great thing for me. It's a good idea to have all the information that I can find on Roper and put it into one collective video to help with awareness. But it acts as a double-edged blade. On one side, I'm helping make a warning to watch out for a sick and dangerous individual. But on the other end, I cold given some viewers with malicious intent the idea to search out Ripper's creations. And Ripper's weird community or himself could harass me as well. There is sadly a bit too much left to the story, so I might as well finish as I'm in too deep. Someone viewing this may just assume that Ripper is just an edgy troll and that he is only to be avoided online. But that is simply very naive. Ripper is too open with everything to the point that it is genuinely scary. The following is a conversation between Kindergarten, which is an alias that Ripper goes by. So I'll change it to that and Pigsy, a random person that I know little to nothing about. Pigsy and Ripper seem to have known each other previously. Also a few other people pop up in the texts. The screenshots are poorly put together, so it may not be grammatically correct, but you'll understand what they are saying anyway. Okay, here it is. Give me your best kiddie torture ideas. Okay. Okay, are you going to give any or just sit there? Impatient Ripper slash can die I slash kindergarten. Okay, first you give them a lollipop. That's not a torture idea. That's luring. Let's talk about when you already have them in hands. Kindergarten, what's your age range for victims? Yes, that's the first step. Zero to five. Zero. Yeah, babies. How long have you been a pedo sadist? One hundred years. I wouldn't want to f a baby but maybe kick one like a football. I'm just like this when I was born. I just recently in the last few years knew about it. Kindergarten how did you find out about Hurtcore? Babies are good, very small and easy to abuse and f They can't say no or move. Through Peter Scully a few years ago. You knew him? How did you find out about it? I'd never say. You were a member of Lux's Hurt to the core? I'd never say. How about violent desires? I'd never say. No comment. That would be 2012, or before. 4. You on her core boards? Like 2013 is when I heard about them, but it's been on and off. Even the names I use ties into them but it's an if you know, you know situation. Then you weren't a member on violent desires? Maybe. It's not like there's only one site then it's just gone forever. Evil BB member? I am aware of it. He knew the police at the time and acted like he hunted pedos so they were fine with him. Don't worry I'm on your team I'm researching stuff man. Many pedo hunters turn out to just be pedos and try to hide their act like they're the good guys. Exactly right. Yeah it's been gone, he's only on Bichut. He was raided a few times because of gay slurs like takedown man and others that said he was abusing children online. I only know what I read in online news. Takedown man is pure garbage. He recently deleted half of his videos. First deep web YouTuber. He lied about everything to do with the deep web. Even made up sheet like Dofulov and all. It's not even the deep web. Netflix is the damn deep web. Was just going to say that. And there's so many sheet tubers that keep saying deep web. Is your goal to make hardcore mainstream in the gore community? Go on Netflix, there's your deep web. I don't post what I make on the clarinet for a reason. Gay slurs bring it to the clarinet and talk about it. I keep that stuff where it belongs. But yes, people talking about it is bringing hardcore to the gore community. What drove you to making hardcore mixtapes? What do you think? It's pretty simple to understand. Please explain. Because I enjoy it and no one else has the balls to make it. I enjoy seeing kids in pain. Pretty simple. When did you start making hardcore mixtapes? First one was. Well mixtapes wise it's been since beginning of the year but I've been doing it longer and my first one that was brang to the clear web was. But there's one that's older and no one knows about it. 
like way longer, but no one talks about them. Name? It didn't have a name really. What was in it? The normal stuff, basically what you would expect. Lots of old videos that are somewhat rare even today. Hardcore? Yeah. Circling back, if it's not called Deep Web then what do you call it? Well I usually just call it Tor, but most people don't know about Tor, so I also call it Darknet. This is like some police interrogation. Yahaha. Yeah, and you're the Fruit Loop falling for the questions. It's fine though. I haven't answered anything people haven't already heard. This is probably one of Mothman's minions. And all the questions that people don't know I don't answer. What's your address? If it bleeds it leads. Come on kindergarten you were on a roll before answering questions, so what's your address? 42 Farrar Parade, City, Gillingara, State Province Area, Western Australia. No fucking way. That's my address as well WTF. Pissy and I live together. And it's in NSW not WA. Our house is up for sale. Anyone want to buy? There is a stench of dead children we can't seem to get out the carpet. We got evicted. Evicted for what? We own the place. Right. Wanna trade kidney stones? What kind of question is that? I was going to say where are we moving to? We can move wherever you want by. How about we move into the place where Daisy's destruction was made and make Daisy's destruction too? Bro, we have the same mind. Haha <laughs> yeah well we live together after all. True. Come upstairs. Now this time we have to make sure the stupid bitch doesn't feel sorry for the children and doesn't dob us in. Our house is one story dumbass. Come into the attic. So now you have the words of Ripper himself, and an acquaintance of his. It's obviously a joke that they live together, and I guarantee that Ripper doesn't know Peter Scully. Even though those statements are false, you can see that both Ripper and Pixie are fantasizing about harming children, which is definitely a worrying thing. Not only does Ripper constantly talk about how he wants to harm children in various ways, but he time and time again has admitted to raping his 10 month old cousin. There is no proof for this claim, nor is there even any that he has a cousin, but it's still questionable how he boasts about it thinking that makes him cool in some messed up way. Ripper has a lot of people that support him, or at least more than zero, which should be considered a lot for him. Some people in his online life, and sometimes in real life life are more notable than others, so I'll name the more notable ones here. Starting with Salem. Salem is someone who as of my knowledge very commonly gives content to Ripper for his mixtapes. You may just think that's a bit normal, but hear this. Salem is a doctor. Yes a dr. type doctor. He is also Russian. If that means anything. Surprisingly I have a picture of him. Here you go. He kind of looks like a Minecraft content creator I've heard of before. Anyway, that Salem I would usually try to do something with the information I have on him, but there isn't much I can do with it other than reverse image search it, and I already did that. No matches. There is also Pigsy, which we already heard of before. Another pedophile. Then there is Grim, which I think is also Grim reality, but I'm not sure. Grim helped supply some content to Ripper, one of which being Daze's Destruction, which that title is getting too common now. Grim reality, just in case he is different from Grim, posts a few clips from Ripper's mixtapes onto the surface web. The clip was of many rape victims with CP audio. The next person has a bit of a weirder story, I don't know her name or what she goes by, but I still know about how she met Ripper. So this girl was around 15 and one of the first people that Ripper befriended under that name. Ripper decided it would be a good idea to send some pornographic things and I guess they then dated or were friends or something like that for a while. Ripper took advantage of that and got her to self harm a few times. That's basically all I know about that, but it's a thing that Ripper did nonetheless, and it's definitely worth bringing up. This next one I want you to take with a grain of salt as I can find nothing about it other than a few bro trust mes. Apparently Ripper got catfished by a gore database administrator. The admin pretended to be much younger, even though he was like 30 or 40 something. 
this Gordy B admin eventually went to prison for messaging minors in illegal ways. Apparently this is the admin's TikTok, but again, this isn't confirmed, just thought it was an interesting enough detail to be included. Also one thing I forgot to say, is that Grim Reality was presumably in the collective, and he tried to make a business called Hard Truth Tapes with Ripper, which was just Ripper's mixtapes, but being sold for profit. This whole Ripper thing has been going on for a while for about a year and a bit. People don't often stay the exact same forever, especially if something big happened in their life. Remember when I very briefly mentioned that r slash Plagudmuth was taken down because of the posts Ripper and his fans were making? Well I found an archive of the posts around that time. In the archives I found a PDF file that has screenshots of a message history someone had with Ripper. Let's go over what's in that, and then something else after that. The guy on the right wheel call send man. Also I will just be skimming through it considering it is very long. So send man asks about one of Ripper's illegal mixtapes, and asks him if he could post it onto the surface web without even knowing it was illegal. Then Sendman asks if Ripper has anything in the works. He says he just finished one and laughs about how it's probably too bad for even the dark web. He said he would post it if he finds a place that works. Ripper mentions how every clip he gets he gets for free and how people would pay for any clips even if they are easy to find for free. Ripper then mentions how he first saw Gore two years prior to those messages and got into Gore around a year after he first saw it. Which looking at dates doesn't really add up. We'll talk about that in a bit though. Then Sendman asks about a 746 group which I have never heard of before. Then Sendman asks if Ripper has heard about a post on r slash nsfl underscore underscore. The post was asking if Gordy B was shut down, and quite a few of the comments on the post were talking about Ripper and his involvement in the site being shut down temporarily. Sendman mentions kiwi farms, and how they don't really like furries. Ripper says he doesn't know what furries are, which is funny considering Plagued Moth said that Ripper was furgy, and that furgy dated a furry Nazi. Anyway, continuing they go on to discuss Pseudoscorpion, the dark web album that samples CP. Ripper says the creator of it was caught, which I'm not sure if that's true. They continue to talk about Pseudoscorpion for a very long time. Something interesting about when they talk about it, is this screenshot of Ripper's computer setup thing. It shows the album, but that's not what I care about. The taskbar is what matters. He uses Filmora to edit his mixtapes. He has Tor like he mentioned. He uses private internet access for his VPN. He's on Windows 11, and he is on a laptop. We'll talk about how that last detail is important in a few minutes. They talk a bit about how you can't really talk to people about gore in real life to people you are close with. Ripper says he doesn't really like gore, but he likes abuse. He says watching it feels like drugs, how he is addicted to watching it. He said he started off in gore with watching suicides, which is evident with an edit of his that shows only suicide content. Then Sendman talks about the psychology behind watching and getting addicted to stuff like gore. Ripper asks why he is only addicted to seeing children in pain and not caring about anyone or anything else. Sendman asks if he was emotionally, physically, sexually, or otherly abused when Ripper was a kid or teen, which he is a teen. Ripper says that he was emotionally abused when he was younger, but not that much. Ripper says that he wants to change, but he doubts that he will ever change. Ripper admits here to acting on his desires to someone in his family. He says it was a baby, and it wasn't recorded in any way, so Ripper is confident in getting away with that. Sendman opens up about his past with his uncle abusing him, which cold been fabricated for this message history, but if not, it's deeply disturbing just like everything else on this Ripper case. Sendman and Ripper then talk about the Ukraine and Russia thing. Ripper says he personally doesn't care at all. Ripper later talks about how he briefly started a business selling his mixtapes on the dark web with Grimm. 
Ripper talks about how he just started another one of his creations. Ripper talks about how he met Grimm through a Discord server, and how Grimm was supposed to be the creator of a mixtape that Ripper later took over and made. That was the one that Grimm supplied Daze's destruction to Ripper for. Ripper talks about how he should make trailers for his mixtapes. Then it finally ends a few pages later. The account that Ripper was signed into when messaging with Sendman got banned or deleted as it no longer exists. So that was the first interview thing, which was very long. Let's get a much shorter one now, which is exclusive to this video by the way. Yes someone I know found Ripper's Instagram, and said he was willing to interview Ripper. Because this interview is much shorter, I will be using full responses in this section, and not just a skim over what they said. Okay here you go. How did you come up with the name Ripper? Do you still like that name? Or do you prefer something else? When I first started Gore I was thinking about using the name Reaper but I feel like so many people use that so I came up with something no one really went by. That's how I got the name. Also Jack the Ripper played a role. I like grim sounding names haha. <laughs> you are best known for being the creator of many mixtapes slash edits. How did you become interested in making Gore mixtapes slash edits? Well, after I began watching Gore I remember watching the Bleaksville mix stops. They really just got me into making simpler Gore edits and some comps. Then when I started making the child abuse tapes there wasn't really a main inspiration behind them. I just enjoyed making them and was the only one that made a ton of child only mixes. It kinda just became my brand so I rolled with it. Do you make any money from trading your mixtapes slash edits? Do you think people should be making money from producing or sharing illegal content, or should it be free? Do you think that your mixtape slash edits will influence people to sexually abuse or harm children? Is this something you want to have happen? No, I make no profit. I feel like it should be free personally but you are risking your life for it so I do understand if people wanna charge, I don't charge because it's not me in the videos, I'm just the editor mostly. I could charge a lot though if I wanted to. Yes, I do feel like it would influence that, and yes, I want it to happen but it's not my choice if they want to do that. When did you start making these? Where did you post them? Where do you post them now? And how many mixtapes slash edits have you made in total? I started making mixes in December of 2021, the same time in which I started watching gore content, well. I started watching Gore a few times in the past but that's when I got into it and made smaller mixes. Was my first full length mix me and one of my mates made it. I at first posted them on some random Gore sites through time like GoreDB and such then after a while I went to her to the core to post all them so they'd have a spot where they can't be deleted. I haven't posted them at all recently to be honest. I have a ton of small edits but full on mixes I got like 13. About 8 hours of content I'd say from the tapes. Who are some other mixtape creators that you admire or are a fan of? Who do you not like? I'm a fan of Cherry Bomber, guy who made the Bleaksville tapes and the collective to an extent, that's really it. I'm not even really into mixtops or the Mondo Gore stuff like that, I just focus on my stuff but I do like those creators. Have you been diagnosed for any psychological disorders? If so, have you been prescribed treatments? Do you follow those treatment regimens or not? Do you think people are either bad or good, or do you think there is no objective morality? I've only been diagnosed with MDD, depression. I try to avoid psychologists and doctors and sheet. I have been prescribed treatments yeah, mostly just meds and therapy both of which I didn't do even though I was meant to. I don't think there's any good in the world for the most part, at least things that it I'd call good. I don't care for people whatsoever and try to avoid them, mostly because of experiences I've had but not gonna go into detail about that. Do you have a real world social group? Only online friends? Mixed. Do you friends know about the mixtape slash edits you make? Have you had any romantic partners? Did they know about your online activities? Are you worried about what your friends and family will think about you if you get caught? No, I have no friends in real life, I've basically been a loner since I've been on this earth, didn't even really have a presence in the world before I began doing the ripper sheet, only online friends. Yes, the online ones all do. 
I have had some strange online relationships that were extremely toxic and ending badly, no in real life one so I just kind of avoid it now. Yeah they knew about my online sheet. Well, they kind of know to an extent what I've done but I don't really wanna go into detail about that for reasons. Have you emotionally, physically, or sexually harmed any person in life? If so, is this behavior you can control, or is it unpredictable? Has this happened multiple times, multiple times with the same person, or just once? Many people assume from your content that you are sexually attracted to minors. Is this true? Do you have a gender preference? Yes, I have before, in both ways. I won't go into much detail though, for personal reasons. Just once with one person. Yeah, it's true to an extent, I think I could snuff little boys and girls but I like girls more personally. Have you or do you harm yourself through cutting or similar activities? If so, why do you think you do that? Do you share your self-harm with others, or is it private? Have you ever been caught or sought treatment for your self-harm? Yeah, I cut a lot, that's the only way I self-harm. I'm not even really sure why I do it, kinda became a big habit but it can be nice to do when I'm going through a lot of mental pain, I barely even know who I am anymore. It's mostly private, I share it to some online friends and that's really it. Yeah, I got caught self-harmed and got sent to a psych ward against my will for it. Do you believe it is okay to extort people for the purpose of creating content for your work? Have you extorted anybody online? If so, how do you do it? Do you think that your activities should be illegal? Have you been active in r slash mondo gore, r slash mondo isha, or elsewhere on reddit? Yeah, I don't really care about other people, so I do it. I have yes won't go into detail. I feel like what I do should be legal personally. No, I haven't been in any of those reddits. I had like one reddit account over a year ago so I could post. After I got banned I never really joined again. Reddit isn't for me. Do you got any announcements or anything coming out sometime? Not really to be honest. I plan on making a comeback video or mixtape sometime soon but it probably won't be anything with children sadly, just normal gore stuff. I might be retiring from the Ripper brand honestly. I'm somewhat glad how it ended up in only a year though. It's been months since I've made a mixtape also, just not really inspired. I appreciate all the love I got since I began though. I know it probably seems like bad timing because of all the crazy shit happening right now but I've been thinking about giving Ripper a rest for a bit haha. <laughs> So you've just heard an interview with Ripper in its entirety, and have you learned anything new? Probably not a whole lot, because what he keeps private he tells no one, but let's go over what we learned. Ripper originally wanted to go by Reaper, but changed his mind. The Bleaksville mixtapes and the Collective's mixtapes inspired him. Ripper makes no money from his creations. Ripper hopes what he does inspires people to harm children. Ripper started making his first mixtape in December of 2021. He's made around 13 mixtapes, he has depression, he doesn't believe anyone is, or can be good, and he has no real life friends, as expected. He's also been in a few relationships that ended poorly, he has harmed people mentally, and physically slash sexually, he cuts himself a lot, and got caught which resulted in him having to go to a psychiatric hospital. He extorts people for his mixtapes, and he wants to make a comeback video. Yes, a comeback video not a mixtape, although he also plans on making a mixtape sometime soon. This video he stated, is supposed to be about his life with original footage as well, which is weird to say the least. And one more interview, then we are done with this section. This time it's a bit too long to have full answers, but I'll just take note of what's important in it. So he thinks Animal's Nightmare is his worst mixtape and Candyla is his best. He liked the initial video Plagued Moth made about him, and he mentions he got addicted to Hurtcore from an old friend of his sending him it. He says that he got interested in the mixtape community after seeing Plagued Moth's video on Amber Alert. This doesn't really matter that much, but Ripper knows of Necrolord also known as David Filler, and has seen his videos. Ripper's favorite Zeusadist video is 1B9 Pups, which is too disgusting for me to describe in any detail here. 
Ripper admits to having killed multiple animals before, and he explains that Candyland is his group of his group of friends that are similar to him. And here we have Ripper himself saying that he molested his 10 month old niece. Ripper admires Dr. Gloves. Ripper says he was friends with someone that was in the collective. Ripper says he never knew Peter Scully personally, and that it was a misunderstanding that he did. He posted Necrolords or David Fuller's child necrophilia content to Goraflix. Howdy, I'm okay, not in jail. I got raided by the feds on February 2. Also nothing is gonna happen with the feds I think. They just said they gonna reset my stuff. So I lost everything which is shit. But at least I'm still free. Oh, yeah I don't care what happens to Moth or the kid honestly lol. Just a crazy situation. Now everyone gonna think that's me bahahaha. <laughs> So plagued Moth's video about identifying Ripper as Fergie was probably wrong. Let's talk about that a bit. In this screenshot shown it has Fergie complaining about one of Plagued Moth's merch designs and hating on him. Will Ripper doesn't hate Plagued Moth and was never active on the subreddit of Mondosia. So he also was probably not active on the Discord server. In this next screenshot you can see it's obviously cropped a bit more of the message out, so that's a bit fishy. Plus Ripper has always stated he never even started making a single mixtape until December of 2021. This is from October. Still close, but off enough to take note of. And 3 hour what? As of my knowledge Ripper hasn't made something 3 hours in length, and if he has my bad, tell me if I'm wrong. The IP thing is also weird as Ripper has his VPN on 99% of the time. Fergie could be acting the same way as Skinhead Face. If you don't know who that is, he is someone plagued Moth said was Ripper even though he wasn't. Skinhead Face said in a pinned comment saying that Ripper wasn't him, but then later he deleted the comment and started trolling people pretending to be Ripper knowing people would still believe plagued Moth. Fergie Cold been doing the same thing. Also Plagued Moth seems trigger happy right now. Saying random people are Ripper without providing proof. I'm also not trying to defend Fergie. He is his own pretty weird guy that's probably done some illegal things. But I'm very sure that Fergie isn't Ripper. In the same Twitter group chat that Ripper sent those messages about him being raided by feds he sent images of some personal information. Like his arm, which we can't really do anything with. But here it is and the search warrant that Ripper had to fill out. Item seized, digital photographs. Now don't get me wrong, I want Ripper to have been truly actually identified, but spreading misinformation to a big audience isn't really that good. It will lead to harassment of genuinely innocent people, and to plagued moth. If he even ends up seeing this, hopefully the extremely common harassment that you receive ends, and I hope your family ends up safe again. And providing as much evidence as possible when talking about something as serious as this is the best choice. I also left one question out of the exclusive interview with Ripper. Here it is. You claim that Fergie aka Fergie, the one and only is not you. Do you feel bad for Fergie getting doxxed for something he didn't do? What should happen to people who dox others? People believe you have used several outs online, including... Ripper, can die I, kindergarten, femboy thighs, and grim underscore reality. Do you publish your work under any other outs people may not know of? Yeah, I'm not Fergie, I've never been in contact with him personally before either, might just be someone pretending to be me for clout or whatever haha. <laughs> I don't feel bad for him no because I don't know him but it probably does suck to be him right now. Yeah, most of those alts are me besides Grim Reality, that was a buddy of mine a while back, he disappeared out of nowhere almost a year ago now. And no, I don't really go by many other names, if I do I usually make it know that I'm Ripper and don't really try to hide it. Want proof that this is the best video on Ripper? This is Ripper, now yes his mouth eyes and hair is censored, but you still have his chin, nose, forehead, and bit of one ear. This picture might not be of him, but it comes from a direct connection of Ripper, that isn't really a friend of his anymore. 
and although his hair is covered, you can see that it isn't puffy and curly, like Fergie's. And you can see that his face is skinnier compared to the more chubby face of Fergie's. Plus there were other pictures of the same person holding a sign that said Ripper on it that were eventually lost. Ripper claims time and time again that he wants to make a comeback video. He says he wants to make another mixtape, but he also says he wants to quit. I might be retiring from the Ripper brand honestly. Whether or not he is, or he isn't going to stop making these things, we do know it will come to an end, and probably sooner than later. He may quit making these, he probably will commit suicide, and if neither of those happens, it's just a matter of time before he slips up again, and law enforcement takes him into prison. Then his face will be known, and he won't be able to truly safely go back to anything really. But he is still a minor, bringing up he is only 16 so very commonly, it makes it seem like he could also get away with what he's done for that reason. He was already let off the hook once with the search that law enforcement already did. The only thing that happened was with his devices being reset. Ripper has more than just depression. I refuse to believe that someone with only depression is addicted to hurt core child and blackmails young boys and girls and has sexually abused a 10 month old. I'm not sure what punishment Ripper deserves, but it definitely isn't in the confines of the law.